Welcome to How to Make Remote Work Better. I'm going to have uh, Ryan start us out for today. We've got a few housekeeping tips to go through here. All right. Thank you, Chandra. So first of all, welcome everybody to today's uh, webinar for Snagit, How to Make Remote Work Better with Video Messages and Screenshots. My name is Ryan H. I'm an instructional designer on our customer education team. I'm gonna be co-hosting the session this afternoon uh, with my teammates, Jason Vallad and of course, Chandra Owen. Hey guys, how are you? Good afternoon. Hey Ryan, hey everybody, thanks for joining us. All right, so today's presentation is gonna be approximately 45 minutes uh, we're with some time left at the end to answer some questions that you guys may post throughout the presentation. Uh, just some uh, information. So you know Chandra is gonna be using our uh, Windows machine today, and she's gonna be using the most current version, Snagit 2021. Uh, but if you are uh, using a Mac, or maybe you have an older version of Snagit, um, that should not be a problem. We will try to point out any, any major differences as we go. So um, like many of you, our, well, our team kind of has a variety of experience with remote work. Uh, so I just was going to start off with kind of telling you, uh, having each of us tell you how many years we've been working remote um, and why we love Snagit uh, so much uh, to help us with our remote work. So um, so how about Jason? Can you, Do you want to get, get it started and let us know how long you've been working remotely? Yeah, absolutely. So I've actually been remotely working for TechSmith for the past six to seven years uh, full time. Um, it is, it used to be more of a challenge than it is now since we're all kind of in that same environment. Uh, but if I didn't have Snagit to use on a daily basis, uh, it would be difficult. I am someone who despises email yet. I saw the results of that poll going, yep, yeah, that's, that's how a lot of us still communicate on a regular basis. Uh, I would rather say something clearly the first time with an image and maybe a little bit of text than having to write out an email and second guess my statement. So um, that's kind of the world I'm living in, especially on our team. But uh, I'd love to hear a little bit from Ryan as well, because Ryan's kind of the, the veteran when it comes to remote work on our team. Veteran might mean, might mean old. I don't know what, what you meant by that. But no, actually, I started working at TechSmith in 2007 and then started going working remotely for TechSmith in 2009. So quite a few years. Um, and me, selfishly, when 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 the whole company kind of went remote as, as of last March, that was where I really kind of um, appreciated the, the team, our, our team. I felt closer to our team because we are all remote kind of meeting and Zoom meetings and things like that. So I felt closer to my team uh, when we were all remote at the same time. Um, but I've used Snagit daily to communicate, whether it's grabbing a screenshot, mocking it up to ask questions that way or just shooting quick videos so that they can hear what I wanna say and things like that. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a daily tool that I use and it helps me immensely working remote. Thanks. And for me, um, I worked in person up until March of 2020. I think it was like March 13th when everything shut down. So um, it is remote work over this past year has been new to me. Uh, but I've loved Snagit and I used it before just for a lot of screenshots. And now I find myself using it for video a lot more as well. So today uh, we want to share with you some of our favorite uses of Snagit. And uh, I think it will apply to a lot of people in, in the work that you're doing. So here, let's get started. All right. So uh, as we go through these examples and I demo these, I want uh, not to just think about like, how do I do this, but also how it could help you with your remote work. So things like, could I send a screenshot or a video instead of have a meeting? Um, could I reduce one more Zoom call with this uh, snag that I'm going to take? Could uh, another thing is the benefit of being able to work across time zones. Uh, we have employees in Germany, we have employees in Texas, many of us are in Michigan. So uh, we definitely, it's nice to be able to capture a video or capture a screenshot and then send that and they can view it in the time that works best for them. Or if you're like me who has kids at home with remote work while you're also working, uh, sometimes there's those times you need to take a little break and help them with their schoolwork and again, 
not having to worry about when everybody's meetings line up and being able to use these tools can be greatly beneficial. So let's get to the demo. Um, so the first, I kind of categorized these as we go through them. And the first category I thought of was with uh, administrative tasks. So this would be things like the first one we're going to show is software settings. So if uh, so our team does a lot of screen captures and we have kind of a defined um, setting that we use on our monitors. So that way we're consistent across the team. Now this could apply to a lot of different things. I'm sure many of you used a lot of different types of software and you have specific settings that you like to keep. And then there's those moments where you have to do a computer update or get a new computer and you don't look at your settings all that often or maybe you get a new employee and they need to set up their their settings so i love to take a screenshot of my settings and save it and then i can share it or refer to it later when something like that happens so let's take that screenshot so to get to snag it to we can either get to it in a couple different ways. I have it pinned down in my taskbar here. If you use Windows, you can open it up with this little carrot here, and there is snag it right there. Or you can get to it if you haven't um, used it and just installed it, you can also get to it where you would go for to open up regular applications. Okay, so there are two parts to snag it, the capture window and the editor. So in this case, the capture window is, or the capture window will, will be opened with the red icon. So now that I've opened capture up, there's a couple different ways to start a capture. I can click the big red capture button, or I can create a hotkey or a shortcut um, in order to start a capture. So in this case, I'm going to click on the hotkey and I'm going to set up mine as Control P. Okay, so we'll we'll use that later, but for now. Let's start by clicking the capture button. And I'm using the all in one tab. Here, the crosshairs are gonna appear and I'm going to select a region. Now this is a scrolling page, so I'm gonna use panoramic capture today. So once I have this top section, I'm gonna click the panoramic button here in this toolbar. So this camera takes a still image, this takes a video, and this takes a panoramic, which can scroll both vertically and horizontally. So I'll click that. And then once I'm ready to start scrolling, I'll click start. And then I'll slowly scroll down this page and it will stitch this together. And I click stop once I've captured the whole section that I'd like to capture. And now it's gonna open up and, oops, and show me my image here in, um, this in the editor in the snagit editor now a couple things that i see i might have scrolled a little fast so i see the the one two got cut off so i might restart and try that again if it's something that i'm going to save um another thing to note is that it's showing up really small and it's like oh i can't read that that's too small so when i look down here i see that it's trying to fit it to my screen and it's making it 35 percent so I'm gonna click on this arrow and I'm gonna make it actual size so that way I can see it better. And now I've got this, all my settings, I can see what uh, resolution, what percentage, and I can share or save that for future reference. All right, so now that we've done that example, I'm gonna try another one here. I just gotta say, Chandra, that uh, when we started this team, uh, you being one of the more seasoned instructional designers, just being able to share that and allowing me to reference that later. It's uh, even now we've made hundreds and hundreds of videos and I still pull up that shared image from you to make sure that everything is just as it should be. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Sometimes there's just so many different check boxes and everything that have to be just right. Um, the second example I'm going to show is what happened. Uh, a common one that, that we use is where did where was the stored at right so um, in this case we'll say somebody needed to know where are my video recordings being stored at um, so first we navigate open up our windows explorer here um, of course you could use finder if you're using a mac and then navigate to the folder that you want to tell someone where some recordings are saved at and then again we can either click that capture button or we can use our hotkey 
and it's going to detect certain windows. So I could, I could um, capture the entire window, or I can use the crosshairs and click and drag to just select what um, area I want to take a picture of. In this case, I'm going to just take a still image. So I'll click on this capture button and let's maximize that. And in this case, I wanna to highlight to where they can get what the recording file looks like. So I'm going to use some tools here. And I'm going to select the shape tool. And then um, I'm gonna turn my camera off here. So because I'm not sure if this is blocking your view as well. So um, let me turn my camera off. Cause I wanna show you this properties panel over here on the right. And I'm going to, going to select a box to kind of highlight this recording file. And I can still make some changes to it if, I'm, if it doesn't look quite the way I'd like it. So this properties panel is going to let me do a lot of different things. Um, I can add a fill, if, but that, of course, would cover up what we're trying to show. So we're not going to do that. I can change the thickness of the line. I can take the shadow away if I'd like. And now I'm looking at it and I think it looks great. So I'm to share it with my colleagues, I click the share button. And then here's where you see all sorts of share options. You can click to save it as a local file, email that, put it in a Word document. So maybe there's a few different steps in a process or a few different settings that you wanna save. You can put those and compile those screenshots into a Word document. We do offer these uh, tools called screencast.com where you can save images or Nomia, Google Drive, share it in Slack, Dropbox, all sorts of different options here to export that. And of course, if you don't see your favorite one of choice, you can do the file, save as, and you can save these as PNGs, JPEGs, all sorts of different options, and then put those and share those with your favorite communications tools. Okay. Hey, Chandra, this is Ryan yeah. real quick. Uh -huh. I'm hearing some uh, feedback from your microphone. I don't know if it's rubbing against uh, your shirt, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Hopefully that'll help. Yep. I think that's better. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks for letting me know. All right. So I'm going to start my video back up again. Okay. So we have talked about. So now we're going to go to, we've gone to, through like some administrative type tasks that we use. Um, next, we're going to go into how to catch things as they appear. So those, there's those things that just pop up on your screen and you want to catch them really quick and Snagit is great for that. So I'm going to open the editor and I'm getting a little bit, let me try this one more time. There we go. And uh, the two things that came to mind when I thought about this that I like to grab really quick on my screen, one are Zoom calls. So a lot of times you're in a Zoom call and you may see something someone's sharing on their screen that you're like, I'm going to need to refer to that later. And I, I don't need the whole you know, slide deck. I just really need this particular slide. Um, so here is an example of one of those captures where it, here's some dates that you, know, you want to capture and save for later. And then another one that comes up, and let me zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it, are those darn bugs and errors. So uh, you're working, and, and of course, it's a little harder when you're working remote to not be able to like walk down to the IT department with your computer and say, you know, oh, this is happening. So we rely a lot on tools like Snagit to be able to communicate to our IT teams what issues we're having. So for me, I'll either take a screenshot if it's something like this where it's an error, error message, or um, if it's something that I can recreate over and over, I'll record my screen and show them step-by-step step what I'm doing and how it's behaving. And I know that when I open those tickets and send those through, uh, that they really appreciate having that those visuals to go along with it. All right, so next, uh, kind of section that I thought of was easily share information. So Snagit is a great tool to share information across your team. So today I'm going to talk about two different tasks. One is 
Uh, if you have a design that your team's working on and you wanna provide feedback, um, how you can use both screenshots and videos to provide feedback. And the next is going to be how to, uh, how you can record a video of your presentation, talking through it and share that to save yourself from having to have like a, another meeting. All right, so let me pull up. Um, so in our case, the example that I thought of is something that we've worked on recently as a team. Um, we were updating this Camtasia Tutorials website and we had to provide some feedback on what we liked, what we didn't like, if there were any typos, things like that. So to do the screenshot, again, we're gonna open that capture window or use that shortcut and click capture. And in this case, I'm gonna use the scrolling capture because I do wanna capture this entire page. So I'm gonna click on this bouncy arrow right down at the bottom. And my hands are off my mouse and I love the magic of scrolling capture as it's capturing this all for me, stitching it together and then putting it right into the editor. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to actual size. And then I'm gonna look through this and see what feedback might I uh, give to this design feedback. So the first thing I'm gonna select is a call out. And so what we're going to do is um, going to add, I, and here I'm gonna pick this yellow, it kind of reminds me of like a TechSmith yellow. And I'm gonna make a little box. And I might type, because this uh, web page is responsive, the icon's being cut off a little bit. So make, and I can adjust my font and size to make that a little bit more easily viewable. And I can move it around too if that's not in the right location. So lots of options. So you can see over on this properties panel side, again, I could change those shadows, the outline, the fill color, the fonts, arrows, all sorts of options. Something else I wanted to show you today, if you haven't seen it before, are themes. So if you have branding colors, you can go to this new theme option and you can select up to eight different colors and uh, use a, apply a theme to um, snag it so that you don't have to keep adding and changing and customizing your colors. And you can even share it. So if you click on this right here, you can even export it and share it with your team who's working remotely as well. And that way you're all using the same colors um, and it can apply that. All right, so let's see. One more piece of feedback we'll add here is to maybe comment that we wish this section was above this section here. So we'll click add a call out and say switch this section, move it higher. And it's kind of small, so I'm going to highlight that change that font size and make it a little easier. Now that I have this feedback I've gone through, I can click share and select the best way to share this with my team. So again, I could use Slack, email, however is, the, is your favorite tool to share that with your team. So we've covered a lot with screenshots and now I wanna get into video. All right, so what I'm gonna do is minimize this here and go back to this website and give the design feedback. I might start adding those annotations and feel like, oh my goodness, there's just so much on, um, so much now happening on the screenshot. Maybe it was easier for me to just talk through my feedback and provide a video. So to do that- Hey, Chandra, I'm, sorry, oh, sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Before you jump into video, can I ask you a quick yeah. question? That was uh -huh. um, kind of along those, lines with image or video. Um, sure. I, I can't pronounce his name right. Hopefully Thierry or Theory um, was asking when he makes a selection, he is not seeing that option at the bottom of the capture uh -huh. to say, what do you want to capture? So can you kind of go uh, through that real quickly to show what the difference is with the all-in-one and image and video? Absolutely. Great question. So there are three different tabs that you can um, use. And the all-in-one is going to give you that choice to select between the, um, the image, the video, and the panoramic. If you're using image, 
the image tab, it's only going, it's not going to give you those options and it'll just quickly take a picture of your screen. And then video is going to do something similar. You capture the region of your screen and then it takes you right to video. I really like all in one because I switch between taking those different types of, of image captures. So it's uh, just kind of lets me select my region and then choose from either video, image, or panoramic. Yep. I use the all in one because I'm horrifically indecisive <laughs> and that allows me to make that game time decision like, yeah, maybe it's going to be an image today. Nope, going to be a video. Too late. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's uh, show recording a video. And so that great you know, topic, because if I wanna do a video, I can either get to it through the all-in-one or I can just click on video and start the capture. Um, but because all-in-one is my favorite, I'm gonna use that today. So click capture and then select the area that I want to talk through. So I'm just gonna start with the top of the page. Here you can see uh, that all-in-one capture toolbar. So I'm going to just click, click in this case, we're going to click record a video. It's opening up this recording toolbar. And I'm going to talk through a couple of these options that are really important before you start recording a video to double check. So this record button is what we click on when we're ready. But before we're ready, we should also check a few different things. This here is the webcam button. So if I want to include myself talking, um, do picture in picture, I can click this webcam button and I can either change the location of where my webcam will appear by clicking and dragging, or I can click this drop down and, shoot, and choose which location I, like, I would like that to be. Or if I can, you know, in this case, I'm giving feedback on the web page. I don't really uh, need my webcam on in this case. This icon here indicates system audio. And what that is, is it's the sounds that are coming from your computer. So if you, sometimes you might be recording something that has music or a presentation, and you wanna capture what's coming through those computer speakers. So you would wanna keep that on and when it's on, it's green. And when it's off, it's gray. Other times you may be recording something and you don't want your Slack notifications or your Outlook chimes or any other interruptions that could come out of your computer speakers to be recorded, so you turn that off. And then the, this here is your microphone. I'm not seeing my microphone waves showing that it's recording something, so I'm gonna click this button here, and I think it's because it, it is recording through my laptop speakers and not through my headset here. So I'm gonna click headset, and now you can see this green kind of way, um, audio meter here showing that it is picking up my voice. One of the biggest bummers, if you've ever encountered it, is forgetting to turn on your microphone and then hitting that record button and talking through maybe a 10 minute um, presentation and, and finding out it didn't record your audio. So that's why I'm saying be very careful and just double check all these buttons before you hit that record button. All right, so let's just do a quick recording of some feedback on this Camtasia page. So I'll click record. Three, two, one. Hi, Jason. I really love this page. There's just a couple things I think we can improve. First is I think we can improve this icon here and how it's appearing. And maybe we need to talk to uh, the web designers to see how we can make that uh, appear a little bit better on the screen. The other piece of feedback I had is we have these videos down here that are really awesome, but I think they're kind of low on the screen. So I'm wondering if we could move those up on the page so that people would discover them quicker. Thanks, talk to you later. All right, so now what happens when I click stop is it takes my video and places it into the Snagit editor. Here, um, I will give you um, kind of the heads up that Snagit's editor isn't meant to be a really robust video editor. This is meant to be able to clean up. Maybe there's a section that you made a mistake in that you want to cut out. You can do those type of things. But if you want to add a bunch of effects and titles and do all sorts of video editing, this is not the tool for you for that type of editing. So let's say I, you know, I 
I am going to cut out that very end part. I don't need all of that. So I can move this, uh, this playhead is what we call it towards the end of where, um, towards the end of the clip. And then I drag this red handle to select and this blue section is going to be what's cut out of the video. It's going to allow me to select cut or cancel. So in this case, I'll just click cut. And now I've cut out the section I don't want in the video. And then of course I can click play, move this, oops, didn't want to select that whole thing, just wanted to move the playhead to the beginning. And I can click play and preview uh, this video. Hi, Jason. I really love this page. There's just a couple things I think we can improve. Okay. And I'm going to go over GIFs in a little bit. So we'll um, cover that in another example coming up here. So Jason and Ryan, do you have anything to add before we show video from images? Actually, um, Greg has asked a great question. When you were showing the capture video, uh, there was, and you mentioned the camera option. Would you mind showing that? He was asking if that was a separate camera that you could use, or is it the same one as your webcam that you that you have? Sure. So in the recording um, toolbar, like when I'm setting yes. that up and yep. choosing the camera. If, when you, yeah, if you would do the same kind of recording, but this time show how to turn on your webcam and how that can sure. uh, use it as a pip, pip or pip picture in picture. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Thanks. Yeah, so you select your region that you want to record and you click that record icon. You, then you have you do have an option to um, use this drop down arrow. So if you for me, I have multiple cameras. I have a built in one and then I have a separate external Logitech camera. So you can choose which camera you want to use. And um, so that's how you can set decide which device to use. And once you pick the one that you want to use, you can click that image and or this icon, this webcam button to turn it off and on again. And you can also move it from the bottom right corner, correct? You can actually click and drag and things like that. Sure can. So you can either click and drag it or you can use this drop down to select which corner you want that to appear in. Mm -hmm. And or you can make it full screen, which is, is ah, a little scary so here. Awesome. So we'll turn that off. <laughs> it definitely gives it some personality, right, Chandra? I mean, when you when you send a video that's got a little bit of a uh, FaceTime in it, it, it's tremendous, especially in a company where maybe you're sending it to someone you've never met before. You might even be able to establish some sort of working relationship when they can put a face to that voice that keeps sending them those questions. Absolutely. I do think that there is like, a, there's a personal uh, factor there, especially when you're working remotely and you're not seeing people's faces um, that I do appreciate about having some of those. Um, when we do tutorials, we go back and forth about it because sometimes when you're recording a tutorial or how to, uh, you you really want people's eye to be on what you're showing on the screen. And so if you have, if you get too many things going on at the screen at the same time, then sometimes you get a little bit of overload there. So yeah, it's good to, I really like it. Sometimes it's good to turn it off and on, depending on maybe on in the beginning to kind of have that personal touch and off while you're showing something and back on. It's, it really, um, there's a lot of different options and uh, we always love to get feedback from our viewers of our tutorials to, to help us because we know some really love to see faces and others might find it to be, um, you know, more distracting. Yep, I agree. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention one thing too is sure. um, obviously it takes a lot of practice to kind of get it the way um, when you feel comfortable with having the webcam on and when you want to toggle it off during mm -hmm. the recordings. Um, I was doing a, a recording, a PowerPoint slide presentation the other day, and I really liked how when I went to a different slide, my webcam was covering up something in the corner so I could easily just click on that and drag it to another corner on the fly while I was recording. And it um, so it allows you that flexibility to kind of move it around the screen even while you're recording. Absolutely. Uh so we're going to show, um, now we're going to show that recording a presentation. So one thing I love, so I'm going to open the Snagit editor. And in the editor, I've already taken several images of a presentation down here. So we've got four images of, let's say, a PowerPoint presentation. So these are slides. 
And I'm going to make a video of me talking through the slides. So let's say we just got um, an update um, on some quarterly data, and I want to share that. Again, do we have, need to have like an hour long meeting if I'm just telling you what the numbers are? Um, this is a way to share to save that uh, and not have to necessarily have that hour long meeting. And you can just record yourself sharing out the, the quarterly information and then share that with your team. All right, so to get started, I'm going to select those four slides. I did that by holding down the shift key and selecting each four, each of the four. The next step is to go to the create menu. So if you're using a quite a, a couple year older um, Snagit version, you may not have this option. So just to give you a heads up. So if you click create and video from images, this is another way to make a video in Snagit. So instead of just recording your screen, what you'll be doing is you'll be able to go record yourself talking through these different slides and moving them from screenshot to screenshot. You do have some options here. So before you start recording again, I strongly recommend checking your settings before you start your recording. And you click and you can choose which color that you'd like as your background. So maybe that gray is a little bit better than that black background, whichever color works best for you. The next is a, you can also do picture in picture with this option. So I could turn that on again, hello, um, and move those around. In this case, maybe I am giving a little bit more, I want a more personal touch. So I'm gonna keep my webcam on. Then uh, you can choose if you want to have your cursor uh, recorded or not. So if it's green, you're recording. If it's gray, then it is off. And this again um, is where you wanna double check which microphone it's using to make sure that it, you're gonna pick up your best sound. So I'm gonna switch that again to my headset. Okay. All right, so um, another thing before I start recording, I can change the order of these. So I know this one actually was supposed to be at the start. Um, and then I was going into this one and it's nice to have them in order. So that way you can start from the left and kind of click over to the right as you go along in your recording. It just makes it a little easier. All right, so we're gonna click record and record a quick little video on our quarterly data. Hey team, just wanted to have a quick share out on how things are looking this quarter. So as we can see, one product information is going up and doing really well while things are going down a little bit over for this area. Um, I'm going to click over here and I can add annotations while I'm doing this recording so I can point to things or I can circle different areas and add those as well. Um, and then click to my next slide here. All right, these are our percentages. Uh, this one's got me kind of concerned, so we'll have to watch out for that. And finally, great job on the 60%. All right. So now it's going to process the video. And of course, the longer the video and the longer it may take for this to process. And it's gonna bring it into an ed the editor again where I can cut out sections of this. Uh, so I can even cut things out in the middle if I'd like. And so what, what I do is I place my playhead wherever I want to make the cut. And then I drag this red handle until it's selected the area that I want to cut out and I click cut. And I can save those as MP4s. Um, have, I can save it as a GIF. So there's several options. I can export that if you do use Camtasia, which is our other uh, product, which edits video, you can click Camtasia and send that right over to Camtasia. Any questions that came up, Jason or Ryan? I do have one um, that Alita just asked, and it had to do with that. And you, you showed it here a little bit with the webcam. Um, would you mind <laughs> doing another recording with webcam, but showing during the middle of it, um, mm -hmm. maybe with the from the Snagit capture window? doing a quick screen recording with the webcam on, and then while it's recording, moving the webcam to another corner, just to try to demo that 
process? Sure. sure. So um, not not using the video from images, but using just like the recording your screen. Um, yeah. Option. Something. Okay. Yep. Sure. All right. So let's capture a region to talk through. And then we'll do video. And then we'll click and select our webcam. And then we'll start recording. And then while I'm talking, I can actually say this is blocking the area. So I can move that in the middle of the recording. I can even turn it off or back on again. Uh, so lots of different options as you, you are making these video messages that you can send out. Perfect. That helps just being able to see it. That, that, was, that was great, Chandra. Thank you. Great. All right. So we have two more categories. We have a how-to guide that I want to show you quickly. And then I also want to show you a, something fun that you can make in Snagit because um, we got to have some fun too. All right. So the first thing is the how-to guide. So I'm back in my Snagit editor and down in my recent, capture, recent captures tray, I have taken some images of a process that I need to share with someone. So again, uh, maybe you're training somebody remotely or um, somebody that you, you know, your coworker needs to know how to do something and you can't just walk over, sit behind them, you know, kind of and say, click here, click here, click here, um, but you have other options to make that happen. So um, you could make a video like we just showed with these images from video from images, or you can make a PDF guide that you can share with them. So let's make that PDF guide. So the way to get started, there's a couple different ways you can do this, but to, I'm going to show you my favorite way. The first is to select the screenshots of the process that I've already taken and have down in my recent captures tray. And then I'm going to click create and click image from template. That's going to bring up a several templates that I can choose from so I can see which layout would work best for this how to guide. So we have quite a few different options available. I'm going to pick my favorite, which is the basic three step portrait option. I click the next button. Here I can start to personalize this template or I can do just click combine and uh, personalize it in the next step. So um, it just depends on what you prefer. Um, so I could add a title, how to add number two project board. And then I can add captions to give better description. Um, so click plus icon. And let's just put the captions in for one. I want to show you uh, what this looks like on the next step. So I click combine. And you can see just like that, I already have this how-to guide that has my step-by-step -step images. And if I was to fill out all those captions, they would have filled in here, or I can now double click on them. Let's zoom in a little bit on this because it's kind of small. There we go. I can say, you know what? I don't really need a subtitle, so I can click on it and hit delete. I can use these bar, blue bars here to move that up and reduce that white space. If I find that I put something out of order, I can quickly click and drag to swap to change the order of those steps so that they're in the right place. And here's where I could have either used uh, that uh, kind of window um, or before to add all the captions, or I can double click and add them now. So uh, add number. So just like that, within like a couple minutes, I've created this great how-to guide that I can send to my team. If I have another step to the process that I forgot, I can click this plus icon and it lets me choose from several different formats. So I could start a new section with a new header, add just a new another step and add a footer. So I'm gonna click to add another section. Here, it will let me drop and drag an image so I can go down to my tray, locate the image of that step that I forgot to add, and drag and drop it right in uh, this here. Sometimes hey, you may, oh yeah. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Chandra. This is Jason. This yep. is my turn to interrupt. Like, like Ryan gets to. <laughs> no I actually problem. have. I actually have two people asking two different questions, but I think it can directly relate to what you're showing right now. So sure. I'm going to ask the questions. Uh, Aaron was asking, how do you get captures into the recent tray so that you can put them into this template if they aren't already there? And mm -hmm. then combined with that, um, uh, Gabriel was asking the same thing. I only see like 20 images in my recent tray. I know there's mm -hmm. more out there that I want to add to this template. So both of them are wondering how we get things in the capture tray that can be placed into these templates or just in general, how do we source the content that we've already captured to put into these templates? Great question. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I got, how I took the captures or how I got them in there. So um, what I did was I opened up this, uh, this project board and I took the captures and then it put it right into my recent captures tray. So uh, I click, and can do a capture. And you know what? One uh, kind of a tip is that if you are going to take like say four captures in a row and you don't want the editor to keep opening up in between each one, you can click this preview and editor button and turn it off. So that way it's not going to keep bringing up a window in between each step. All right. So I'm going to click capture and let's say, say this is my starting screen where I'm going to show someone that they have to click this plus icon at the top and click the image, I just want to still, still image. And then I'm going to do my next step by clicking this plus icon and get that capture window up and take another capture of the next step. And do that one more time where in this case, I'm going to use control P instead, use my shortcut. It starts the capture and I'll take another step here. So now, when I open the editor, I should have at the start of the recent captures tray, those three images that I just took uh, that I can use in my template. Um, if I already have those captures taken and they're not in my recent capture tray, I can click library either down here at the bottom right or up here in the top left. And that will take me to my images that I have taken recently and give you just one more tip. Um, if you want to, you can tag them so they're easier to find. So if you have, say we have this process here, let's say it's project board. Um, I can click and uh, click on the, oops, sorry about that. Click on the image and then there is a tag icon that appears in this bottom left and we're gonna title it project board. Now I've started a tag for project board and it appears right here and I have one image in that board and let's add a couple more images so we can um, click on say click and hit shift to multi-select you can click on tag and then select project board and enter and just like that I now have those organized um, into that process. Um, so that they are there, but I can still get to everything by clicking on this images and sort it by name, size, date, all sorts of different options. That was perfect timing because Allison had a similar question earlier about that whole tagging options. And you can also add tags. I see the tag button down here right above the capture tray. So like, for example, that that image you captured earlier, which was like the system settings, mm -hmm. um, a way to find that image quickly, like a six months from now, you could tag it, right? Sure could. So I could create a new tag called settings. And now when I go into that library of mine, I should see settings and it will have any of those saved. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so I have one more last thing because I want to give a couple minutes for questions still, um, and that's the fun thing. All right, so my team, we, we like to have fun. We like to send funny gifts on Slack um, pretty frequently just to cheer each other up. Um, so in this case, I'm going to make one. So let's say you're having a day and you're making a bunch of mistakes and you need some funny gifts. So I'm going to make one by going to file and I'm going to open. And I'm going to bring in this MP4 file. It's a three second clip 
of actually, it's a recording from my cell phone somebody took of me trying to do my first surf lessons. And I thought it might be pretty funny to make this a GIF for when, whoops, you know, I'm making a mistake. So, or, um, so now that I have the video in Snagit and I can play it, but I wanted to make it loop so I can kind of loop over and over and then I can share it and we can have a good laugh on the team. So um, to do that, I click the GIF button and it's gonna give me several options. Um, screen video, high motion video, which would work better for this. So uh, anything where you've got a lot of movement happening. If you do screen video, I tested this earlier. Um, it kind of does a frame by frame and it's a little bit chopped up. So um, you can use high motion when you're recording with your camera. Uh, one of the things though to keep in mind is anytime you're doing more high motion video, your file size for the GIF is gonna be a little bit bigger or you might decide you wanna do a custom GIF and change the dimensions of the size to capture. Um, maybe you don't want looping or you want it to fade to black, all sorts of different options are available. So I'll click high motion video and click create. And now you can see down here, it kept my original MP4 so it didn't get rid of or edit my original file. It started a new one, a new GIF here and I can click play and kind of watch that loop over and over of me falling into the ocean. So um, yeah, so that is how to make a GIF with Snagit. So I'm gonna open it up for a few questions before we um, call it an afternoon. I hope that you found some great tips and tools to make your remote life a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, Ryan or Jason, any questions? I do have one, maybe just more of a clarification question. Allison asked earlier, um, saying, don't you lose the voiceover when you cut or crop sections out of a video? So in the editor, when you recorded a voiceover narration video, when you mm -hmm. make cuts, you also not only you lose the uh, screen capture, but you also lose the audio, correct? That is correct. So any if you cut the section out, you also will cut out the audio that came along with that section. So it is good to what I would do in that case is um, here, let me pull this edit editor up, um, see a video here. What I typically do is I would listen to it first. While I'm talking, I can actually say this is blocking. And then I could say, oh, this is the part I want to cut out and I'm okay with losing the audio here. Maybe um, a good good tip is to kind of know from three seconds is where I want to start cutting and then okay, listen. Yes, I can move that and then the say the recording. Okay. Oh, six seconds is where that section stopped. And then now I can move this playhead and kind of select three to six seconds. And I know that that is the section I still want to cut and that I'm not going to cut out any audio that I didn't want to lose. If that, if that helps. Yeah, that, I noticed one thing different from Camtasia, where you actually see the audio waveform, you don't mm -hmm. see that in Snagit. So it makes it a little bit tricky to, to exa get exactly where you want it, but it does take some trial and error. Um, if you cut it and it's not quite right, you can always undo it and bring it back and then adjust the selection tools a little bit and, and keep trying until you get it just right. Mm -hmm. so thanks for showing that. Yeah. Um, uh, theory asked, uh, the size of the video. And I think this was when get, get a lot of video questions yeah. when you, when you did the video in the editor when, with, with images, mm -hmm. um, he's asked, does it depend? Does the size of the video, which I'm guessing it's dimensions, does it depend on the size of the images or does it always go to like a 1080p or 720p or something like that? That's a good question. And I, you know, I haven't got that. Um, it looks like I can see it's nine, 1920 by 1080 is what I have showing up here. Let me just double check. I'm going to click a couple just to see what I get here. So click a couple, create video from images. Okay. So it does, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to give me a choice to change uh, those dimensions right here. Um, and so it is 1920 by 1080. So yeah, if you didn't want the black lines, um, what I would recommend is doing, making sure your screenshot captures at that dimension. So let's show how you can see that. So I'm gonna pull up a, let's see, 
not this presentation. Um, I think I have the other one right here. And is if I was starting my capture, I can see with these crosshairs how large that image is going to be. So I can see that um, I can make some, I choose to, actually I can just, one easy way is just to click and then I can do 1920 by 1080, type it in. It's gonna give me those dimensions. Then I can move it around to capture what I want um, on the screen. So if I want to make sure not to get any black lines around those captures, so a few different options. Great. And I think that's where the blending that background color really comes into play that you were showing us before. So that yeah. even if you capture them, because I was just doing a couple samples on my side to make sure, uh, I think that's where it comes into play that even if you miss snag something in terms of sizing, you could still mm -hmm. make it look really polished and professional with just a click or two. Yep, absolutely. Mel Melissa asks a great question. I, I think I know the answer to it, but um, it has to do with tagged, like a group of images in a tag. So for example, you tag three or four or five, whatever images, and mm -hmm. they're not opened up in the capture tray. Mm -hmm. What's the quickest way to open them? Can you multi-select and like hit enter? I think that's how you do it. Like if you go into your library uh -huh. and open up the uh, remote webinar, Sure. can you multi-select like maybe four or five of them? And I think if you hit enter, does it open up all of them at the same time in the capture tray. Looks like it does. I have sure even. I learned something new today. Yep. Perfect. So, and then as what's nice is in the capture tray is you can you can reorganize them, right? You can click yes. and drag. Yeah. So before this presentation, I had quite a few, and I knew I was going to talk about these two first. So I clicked, and and yep, I can take this and drag it to the uh, start of my tray. So that way um, I'm not hunting around and trying to find those as we go along. Awesome. Jason, do you have any questions that, um, that you may, that have come up? No, I mean, the only thing that uh, I've been able to, I, cause I also gleaned information today too, is that uh, when the question was asked that you were kind of describing the size of, of the uh, the video, I mm -hmm. took it a different way where people were saying, is it the size of the video output dependent uh -huh. on the size of the images? Mm -hmm. And the ad answer is absolutely yes. The bigger the image is, uh, the larger the uh, video file is going to be. So that's always a consideration, right? If you're sharing it locally, that's definitely a consideration. If you're sharing it to the cloud, yeah, usually it's just the upload time, but uh, so that can be taken both ways. And I think we answered it, or you answered that question uh, both ways. So they should be set. Great. I have a couple more for you. You ready? Sure, I am. Uh, back into your library. Is it possible to rename an image that you captured? Because I think a time date stamp, uh, just doing the right click, is that? Yeah, oh, it looks like because I had multiple selected. Trying to figure out why that is not giving me the, it, it's there, but it's grayed out. Let me try. I'm going to go to my images real quick. All right, so if I can click this. Might have to look into that because typically I thought you should be able to right click and I see rename there. I'm not yep. sure what is happening with my Snagit today, but. Yeah, I thought it was too. So I'm not sure why it's why it's grayed out. But. Oh man, I thought we were going to get through a live demo with no. <laughs> Had to throw one out there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that I've got a question unless Ryan's got another question. Go for it. <laughs> uh, Chandra, can you pop back over to the editor where you've got a video on your, uh, in your recent tray? Don yeah. asked a question uh, and I think it's a great question. Can I take a still image directly out of a video that I've created maybe for a help document or something like that? You showed us how to do an animated GIF can someone mm -hmm. grab a still image? Well, I know kind of one way to do it. I'm not sure if you'd recommend it for, for the, so Jason, would you change the capture window to be able to capture snag it and then do it that way? Or do, what, what would I, you do? I use the, the PNG button immediately oh, to the yes. right of the animated gift. Yep. <laughs> I find a feeling. Yes. I, yeah, I, yep. that is the much better way to do that. Um, so uh, I think we get used to some of the ways that we have to capture Snagit when we make tutorials. Um, but yes, the much, much better way to take a, a still of an uh, item in your video is to find the, the section that you want to take that image of 
and then click on the PNG button here on the right. And then just like that, you have that image.